We've had some great conversations with doctors across Illinois surrounding medical records requests. And really as a result of a lot of our conversations that we've had um, with the patient's right of access, along with uh, the more recent uh, risk adjustment audit requests that have been coming into a lot of our doctor's offices. And so some of the questions that we're getting surround, okay, what exactly do I send in? So I, I, the baseline is really this, and this is really important to remember. Um, with the way that HIPAA is structured, um, you wanna make sure that you send uh, the minimal necessary to be able to fulfill the request. Um, when it comes to standard requests, I'm not talking about right of access, but standard requests, the minimal necessary. In other words, if the patient is authorized in one particular request, um, you to send a, an attorney, for example, the medical records, and they give very specific timeframes for authorization, you don't provide information outside of those timeframes. Also, if the, if the request narrows it even further, you wanna make sure that you adhere to that request specifically. Now, additionally, on these risk adjustment audits, when they request for the medical records, they're giving you a specific time frame uh, for a specific plan. Um, and it's important to remember that you're also adhering to that as well. In other words, you only give them the specific dates um, of service that they're requesting. So if they say all of a particular calendar year, then January 1st of that year to the end of the year, that's all you send. Now, here is the question that's come up. What happens if uh, the patient in the middle of the year through a shifting policy or a shifting contracts with a prior employer or whatever the case might be, what if in the middle of the year they switch from one Medicare Advantage plan to another Merit Medicare Advantage plan, or if they end up switching off of standard Medicare to a Medicare Advantage plan or vice versa? Well, in those particular cases, you have to pay attention to the entity that's making the request. They're not entitled to see the other portions of a patient's medical record. In other words, um, if they switch, so if they switch from insurance company A to insurance company B in the middle of the year, and uh, an entity on behalf of insurance company A or insurance company A themselves make that medical record request, you only send insurance company A records. In other words, those specific records that have been directed or that have been billed to insurance company A, if they're the ones making the request, they have to be just to that entity and just within that time frame. It's a really important distinction. Um, also remember that a patient, and this is an incredibly rare circumstance, but a patient can actually um, direct you not to share medical records with an insurance carrier. I get a full article that covers all that, uh, but just be cognizant if you do have a patient or two that has given you specific instructions on not to share medical records uh, with an insurer, then in those cases, you cannot share those records. You have to make sure that you split apart those records and don't send in the ones that they have told you not to share with the insurance company. Um, but again, biggest thing is this, follow the instructions and the request to a T. Uh, make sure that it is only for the entity that's making the request. Um, and when in doubt, always verify to make sure, um, check with the entity making the request or check, check with the insurer uh, to find out exactly what they're requesting. And if you don't get something clarified, um, ask them to give you something more clear inside of the request. In other words, send a new request that is more clearly defined of exactly what they want. Otherwise, at the end of the day, always give the minimally, minimal necessary information to be able to fulfill that request. Um, and by the way, on a side note, if you weren't, if you didn't know, although the patient right of access is a must, you must share those records under a patient right of access, HIPAA and all of the other, even under a standard authorization is still a may share. And so if you do make mistakes, um, the only mistakes and the only challenge could come back is more related to, uh, more related specifically to your contract with the insurer that you're, uh, that is requesting those medical records and whether or not you get paid or whether or not you're fulfilling your contract uh, and not necessarily a violation of HIPAA. Um, so remember standard HIPAA requests and authorizations are may share, although we strongly recommend that you do share those cases Right of access when the patient's making the request either for themselves or for you to send it uh, to another entity under a right of access. And that'll be typically clearly notated on those requests. That's a must, so you always have to. But on all of them, make sure you narrow it down to the minimally necessary to be able to fulfill the request as it's on the paper. We hope this information helps you out and we'll catch you next week.